Welcome back here to X's and Bros, Michigan Sports Network. Danny Gaylor, Ryan Elke, Anthony Bellino all joining you. Join us now. He did his GA years under John Beeline at the University of Michigan. He now is a current assistant coach at Ohio University. Hey, you know what? He's a Concordia alum. He's a real Michigan man. His name's Kyle Barlow. Find him on Twitter at Kyle Barlow 4 Send your recruiting tapes there. Coach Barlow, my friend, how are you? How's life? How are things? Good morning. Things are great, man. You know, I was... Um... I was just thinking the the fact that the Lakers were on the early game yesterday makes that the first in a long time. And I love watching the Lakers, especially because LeBron, you know, LeBron, I know you give him a lot of bleep on this program, but LeBron's a very good basketball player and a great, and you know, probably top three of all time, one of the greatest of all time. But when AD is healthy, that team is good, man. But you get two to three times a game where he grabs his arm so I can't feel my arm or he grabs his eye like he did last night. You know what I mean? And it's just like, it's fun to watch when they're really good. But like, AD, like, don't be a China doll, man. Like, you know what I mean? I know what you mean. I, I trust me, that guy's softer in the role as Charmin. He's like built out of paper mache. And LeBron, <laughs> I would like the the king of convenience more if he wasn't the king of convenience. If you know what I mean, like he's just such a liar, la fraud, la flop. Like it makes it okay. he makes it easy for me to dislike him because I just feel like okay, oh, okay, he, okay. He, in what way then? In what way? Yeah. Okay, let's go back to the the animosity in this country in 2020. Let's go back to the people oh. protesting the George Floyd um, murder. Yep. Right. Let's go back yep. to police brutality. Let's go back to the Black Lives Matter movement. Let's go back to all of that, which it disappeared all of a sudden. But let's go back to it. And as we go back to it, there was a story. Uh, LeBron James's home in L.A. was vandalized. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I I don't know if you have, but I haven't. Uh, TMZ hasn't. Uh, no one has come up with a single photograph of the vandalism that allegedly took place at his home. Now that's a serious that's a that that's a serious accusation there, and I understand and take full responsibility. Yeah. And when I see the yeah. photographs for it, then I'll believe it. Or as the kids like to say, "Picks or it didn't happen." So then we'll continue on that very same train, right? Where the great Dr. Martin Luther King okay. once said, "I believe he said, uh, I think the quote I misquoted Winston Churchill and credited him for a quote that yeah, should have went to that. Theodore Roosevelt." So I want to make sure I that's get this. That's my son's name. Yeah, that's my son's name. Big, I'll do that. Big win. Um, but. Uh, j- Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Correct. Well, yep. all of a sudden, yep. the Golden State Warriors minority owner, I forget his name off the top of my head, but there's a group of people called the Uyghurs in, uh, I believe it's northwest China. Uh, they are Muslim by religion, and there is allegedly, or was allegedly, a basically a genocide of these people in China. You know where a lot of Nike sneakers are made? They're made in China. Yeah. So although we yeah. want to protest everything, every single thing that happens here, wait a minute. The minute yep. it hit your pocketbooks, right, the minute it could have hit your pocket, you decided not to say diddly boo about anything. But then you expect other people to have any care or concern about your cause. That's a fraud. He went on to say during playing Madden that he uses Jalen Ramsey a specific way. And Jalen Ramsey said, you know what, LeBron, you sure do lie a lot here on the Internet. And everybody laughed because, well, he does. And those are just a couple of quick examples, not to mention his decision to go get all of his friends and try to team up and then lose to a seven seed in the Dallas Mavericks the first go around. I get it. I understand. Had Draymond not got suspended, they probably don't come back from 3-1 against Cleveland. We'll get to Draymond Green, the head case that he is. But you know what I mean? Like, there's just too much. You won the Mickey Mouse bubble trophy. That's fine. The Miami Heat were a lot better <laughs> in that bubble, too. That's pretty interesting. And you went on one time. You went to say that you were chasing a ghost that is Michael Jordan to all of a sudden saying that when you guys beat the Warriors, the best team ever, slight at Jordan. That's when you knew you were the best player ever. Also, another slight at Jordan. I could go on, but I'll stop because the fans are probably like, damn, this guy really came prepared for this. And we didn't talk about this at all <laughs> beforehand. No, we didn't. No, we didn't. And, you know, I, I think you became you, you, you came very well prepared. And I agree with most of what you said, too. But let's not forget, like, if you want to bring up the political issues, um, MJ would never touch those. But LeBron in, in Miami with uh, Travion Martin, um, with the hood, they did the hood up. Like, right? Like, they did, they did all that stuff 
um, that everybody was afraid to touch as an athlete. And, you know, like Michael had the famous Republicans buy shoes too. And then you got LeBron with um, Hillary Clinton going against um, Donald Trump and, and being outspoken that. So I will give LeBron a lot of credit where that comes to, um, even though he deserves a lot of criticism. But you have to remember too, LeBron's never been in trouble outside of basketball in his life. And you know how hard that is? I remember an Instagram story and a screenshot. Uh, you teach me how to hunt and I'll teach you how to hoop, I believe is what it said with a uh, a young, uh, attractive lady who had a, like a crossbow or something crazy. Yeah. In her. I'm yeah. like, what is he doing yeah. out here? Farmers only. And if that's the worst thing that you can bring to one of the greatest of all time, that's the worst thing I can say on record because I got a lot of friends in Cleveland. <laughs> that's the worst thing I could say on record, Coach Barlow, because I got a lot of friends in Cleveland. Well, we know, know what, what goes down and where it goes and down and how it happens in the land. You know the mistake by the lake. You know what I'm saying? Deep in the queue. <laughs> it's been going down for a long time across many generations. But you know what the difference is? LeBron has never, and you know a lot of friends, and you can say stuff off the air, but on the air, you have nothing to validate it, right? Because he's been one of the greatest people of all time. Even Tiger Woods can't have that uh, title for all the stuff he's been through off of the golf course. He's not a coward making people sign NDAs. That's what what it comes down to. He he ain't afraid to go out to the bar late at night. You know what I'm saying? Tiger Woods. Just talk. Deshaun Watson made people sign NDAs. Look how that worked out for him. I'm just saying. You know, if you want to bring up, if you want to bring up NDAs, we'll bring up NDAs. I think I don't think that's going to stop many people. But my point is, I know you hate LeBron, you hate Draymond. LeBron, I mean, we're not going to talk about Draymond this 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 time around. But LeBron, one of the greatest of all time, kept a very solid reputation on and off the court. And, you know, when it comes to human rights and China and all those things, you can nitpick this man, but think about what you're nitpicking compared to any other superstar of all time. And it's it's minuscule is what it is. So, you know, I will defend LeBron because I do think, like, my man's out here at 30, what, 38, 37, and I'm watching him. Oh, yeah, making these passes, making the reads. Like, he is – like every time you watch him, it's a treat. That's why I was so psyched he was on at seven thirty tonight uh, or last night um, because I actually got to watch him without having to fight sleep because I got a one year old upstairs. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> it's it's great. I love it. I love it. And that was my whole point. I didn't mean to get into China. You brought it to China as uh, as a former president would say, but you know I I, I love him. He's a great guy. And and uh, let me let me say this just so that people know. Those are things I don't like about LeBron. But there, yeah. there isn't at a time when he was 26, 27 years old, and you told me you got to start a franchise. I, I bring that up because Sam Amick, a very well-respected writer for The Athletic, they put together a poll uh, that we've been, you know, we've been dabbling and talking about a little bit here on the program this morning. Uh, and, and at 26, 27, there isn't a person on planet Earth that knows anything about basketball that wouldn't say, I want to start my franchise with LeBron James. He's a model citizen. He's got the I promise yep. school, right? I'm not yep. gonna I'm not gonna talk all the trash without being able to hey, I can shine some light on him too. I mean, how many kids are getting the opportunities because LeBron James continuously is giving back to Akron in a way that we haven't seen a star, especially I mean ever, ever but anybody at his magnitude go, you know what? All the kids in the hometown where I grew up from, they're going to have a better opportunity to be successful because of me. No the, doubt. the fact that all of his friends in his close knit circle. He said, hey, and they were smart about it, too. Hey, this is what I'm going to do. You all need to go get very proficient and very professional in your own fields. And we'll reconvene here in a couple of years. And everybody did their job and they protect that mm-hmm. man. They do it the right way. You know, yeah. Is, yep. he, is he corny? Do I want to see him you know, singing three lyrics of a, a T Grizzly song in the weight room? Yeah, he's a, he's a total cornball. Uh, but at the yep. end of the day, he's still a great basketball player. He's still probably number two of all time. And I'm not ever backing off that mountain. I'll die on that hill for MJ. And, and that's fine. And that's fine. But you know what he's number one in? Scoring, which is something that is a longevity award. I get it. But you know what else are longevity awards? Scoring. And that's what Kareem Abdul-Jabbar <laughs> did for the longest time as he scored. You know who's number three on that list? I bet you do. Carmelo. Carl Malone, 
what a longevity award that was. I mean, the dude played for 25 years and, you know, didn't marry the 14-year-old, but, you know. And, and he's got that to answer to. LeBron didn't have that answer to answer to so you know and you know else is a longevity award assist and Carl Malone's teammate John Stockton has that award he'll probably never relinquish it but you know who's probably gonna end number two LeBron so it's like you look at all these things and at the end of the day like I get it we think Michael's the greatest because you know he went six for six never lost in the finals you know there's more mythology to Michael than um actual um advanced statistics which is fine but you know at the end of the day like i'm just privileged to watch lebron james play basketball like we did last night at 7 30 not 10 p.m eastern time just like i remember telling all my buddies when we were it was 2000 i don't know i was in high school and college so 2005 to 2009 i'm like just watch kobe whenever he's on tnt and our boy kevin harlan is doing the play-by-play just watch him because you're watching two goats at that point. You got Kevin Harlan, you got Kobe. I mean, we're just like just watch it because at the at the end of the day, like that greatness doesn't last forever. And and, and that's what I think about LeBron right now. I really do. Just because I, I feel like I just caught a just a little sniff of slander there. <laughs> Not one, but two three-peats. A three-time steals champion, a 14-time All-Star. 11 of his 13 seasons, he was All-NBA. The 84-85 Rookie of the Year, the All-Rookie Team. Nine-time All-Defensive, a Defensive Player of the Year Award. Six-time Final MVP, five-time League MVP, uh, six-time champion, ten-time scoring champion. Oh, and by the way, everyone talks about the Washington Wizards and blah, 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 this, that, and the third, and ah, Washington. And, yeah, he came back to try to revive a team at 38-39. Yeah. That, you know, yeah, I started 53 of 60 games in the 01 02 season. Like, that's that, well, that's pretty, like, that's pretty solid. Oh, no, 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 no. You just ripped off the resume, but let, let what separates LeBron and Michael, and this is not where we want to go with this conversation, but we're going there. <laughs> what, what separates LeBron and Michael? Oh, there's a couple arguments. One is he, Michael was the MVP and the defensive player of the year in the same year. LeBron cannot claim that. But, okay, folks, let's look up 2013 LeBron, and let's see. Okay, he was the MVP with the Heat. The dude was an absolute machine. He was he was shooting, like, 65-48 from three and then, like, 90-80 from the free throw line. It was insane splits. And then he was also the best defender in the league. Him and D-Wade would just heat people up as soon as they got to half court. But you know what? Marcus Gasol won player, uh, Defensive Player of the Year that award. Marcus Gasol was second team all defense. Like LeBron got screwed in that award. Okay, so let's take that away from him, right? Like, there's a lot of different arguments you can make. Like, trust me, I'm, I'm not saying Michael's not the goat, but I'm just saying for everybody who said this is a night night argument, like my one and a half year old says when we have to take a nap, it's not night night. Like, there's a lot of stuff that has to go into it. I'm just saying when LeBron's on prime time at 7:30 Eastern time. And I'm excited because I still get to watch this dude make every right basketball play. He pumping. I'm watching him last night versus Grizzly. He shot faked the three, took his time. One guy jumped down, shot faked again. Another guy jumped down. I'm like, oh, wow, he has a wide open look. So he pulls up to shoot it, and he throws to another person that nobody saw for a layup. Like, his greatness is it's, 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 it's the best of this time period. I'll say that for the least. And I'm a Kobe guy. I'm not a Michael or – LeBron guy. I'm a Kobe guy. Yeah, and and look, um I I when it comes to LeBron, like he he, he there was LeBron fatigue there for a while with MVP voting cuz there was a yep. stretch yep. where I mean, hell, he was the most valuable player in the league. There there was no there was no if ands or or buts about it. We didn't even get can we get to it real quick? Uh just just real yep. quick because yep. the stomp is one thing, right? Uh, Sabonis grabs his ankle. Okay. Draymond decides to relinquish his leg from the, the mm. grasp of Demonis Sabonis and then step on his chest mm-hmm. and then push yep. himself off. Then afterwards, yep. after the technicals are issued, he begins to look at the crowd. He's getting ejected. He looks at the crowd. He's mouthing off to the crowd. Adam Silver's there. Yep. He's the commissioner is there. He is a s- word. swearing at the fans. Now, <laughs> one thing I pointed out earlier in today's program, 
the one thing that they, I don't think a lot of people brought up until Joe Dumars talked about it yesterday on uh, ESPN's program about the, the NBA, I forget what it's called, uh, but it was the fact that it was conduct detrimental because what the league does not want is Malice in the Palace Part 2, especially in 2023, which is eons yeah. different than what it was when it happened in Detroit. Right. Um. Yeah, I think... You know, it's it's actually very fascinating that Joey D is the um, the law and order when it comes to this because he was the GM of that mouse in the palace, and you brought it up. I I don't know, man. I'm torn on this. I I know you don't like Draymond, and I know there's a lot of reasons, and all of them are pretty much valid. But at some point, like. He got his leg grabbed. I get it. He got his leg grabbed the day before. I get it. But it's like you can't stomp a guy, right? And then and then to go back and forth with the fans, like it goes back to the Russell Westbrook. Like, you know, if if we're going to bring this up about Draymond, we have to bring it up about Russell Westbrook. Did you see him with the fans in the VIP walking out of the tunnel and, into the game? Well, you know why that happened. It's because he took a short. Right. It took a he took a shortcut. You can cut through that VIP area. It's a shortcut to the locker room. So you opened yourself okay. up to that by walking back there. And then, and then at the end of the day, if somebody calls Russell Westbrook a fraud or soft or whatever, uh, uh, Russ, a uh, brick can't shoot, whatever. I am so like. I don't know about this whole culture of I can just point at a fan and he's got to go, and they're they're automatically kicked off. Like, Russell Westbrook does this, I feel like, once a night, right? Every time he plays, he gets a fan thrown out, and it's like, is is this worthy of being thrown out? Now, I do agree. Like, there is a certain line you cross as a fan when you talk something like when you say a certain thing to a player, you know, whether it's personal about a family, whatever, I agree. You got to go. But every night, Russell Westbrook gets somebody thrown out like Draymond Green going back at the crowd. Like I get it. Like they're giving it to you. You're giving it back. Like, I, I don't know. Like the, the, the Russell Westbrook one is the one that rubbed me the wrong way. Hey, you know what? I, I, Guy rubs me the wrong way all the time. Pun intended. All right, there he goes, Kyle Barlow. <laughs> Follow on Twitter at Kyle Barlow four. Oh man, what a what a great conversation! Didn't know it was going that route, but man, that was a lot of fun. Thanks again. Let's do it next week. <laughs> all the time, baby. Love the coach. Uh, yeah, we went we went full spectrum on that one, didn't we? I mean, we were all over the place. But those are those are conversations, right? That are uh, that that surround the game and. Uh, LeBron last night, the response from Dylan Brooks afterwards. Oh my goodness, we got ourselves a we got ourselves a good NBA playoffs uh, brewing right now.